everyone, welcome back to JRAM Kids. Today is episode number eight. And today we are still learning about the life of Jesus and how he was performing miracles on this earth. And today we get to learn about when Jesus was walking on water. Ooh, so let us be excited for that. Now before we start, let us remember, please put away your distractions, please grab your Bibles, and please participate. Now let us jump into praise and worship, led by our Ate Nairal Pimo. Hi everyone, so before we start praise and worship, I'm going to teach you a couple of the steps from the chorus. So it starts off as... I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. Then it goes, He calls me friend. And you do that until the end of the chorus. And remember, all the verses are all the same and all the choruses are the same. So let's start.
kids? How are you guys doing today? My name is Pastor Joel and I'm so excited once again to be with you this morning on a Sunday on a Sunday afternoon. Are you guys excited to learn more about Jesus? Can I hear you guys shout? One, two, three. Yeah, let's go. I'm so pumped to be here because we get to learn about our Savior. Okay, so today's story, what are we going to learn about? What is Pastor Joel going to speak? So today I'm going to speak about how Jesus walks on water. Oh my goodness, can you imagine that? Jesus walking on water, is that even possible? Well, if you open your Bibles to Matthew 14, verses 22 to 36, you will see that that's where we're gonna be studying the passage today. So open your Bibles there. Parents, this would be a good time to help your kids, or I challenge you kids, again, to look for it yourself. It's in the Gospel of Matthew, okay? So Matthew 14, verses 22 to 36, okay? So today's topic is about how Jesus walks on water. Okay, so what's happening? I'm going to give you a brief story, a brief summary of how, what this story is about. So Jesus does this crazy miracle. He, before, before verses 22, he does this crazy miracle where he feeds 5,000 people. Isn't that crazy with just two loaves of bread and uh, two loaves of fish and five, I think something like that. But anyways, what's happening here is that he decides, to, so he does ministry and he decides to tell his disciples all of a sudden, after this event of feeding 5,000 people, Jesus tells his disciples, hey, why don't you guys go ahead and go across the Sea of Galilee, get a boat, and I'll meet you guys back at home because it was getting pretty late. It's time to go home and rest. But Jesus decides to go without them. And you might be asking me, Jesus, where did Jesus go? Well, how come he didn't go with his disciples? Well, it says in the Bible that Jesus decides to go up the mountain. He starts to go up the mountain and he decides to pray to the Heavenly Father, to God the Father. And he wanted to showcase that prayer is very important. Even Jesus prayed and that communication and praying to God is an important thing that we should also do when we're living here on earth, okay? And so during this time, um, as the disciples were getting a boat and they crossed over to going to the Sea of Galilee, as they were crossing the Sea of Galilee, going back home, all of a sudden a violent storm came and the winds and the waves were going crazy they were holding on the disciples were panicking they were getting very scared because the waves it seemed like they were going to drown it seemed like the boat was going to break i have this boat that i made for you guys to give you guys an illustration so the boat was going crazy it was it was, it was just the winds and the waves were so powerful that the disciples did not know what to do I want to ask you first and foremost, are, what are you guys afraid of? Are you guys afraid of anything? The disciples during this moment were afraid of the winds and they were afraid to lose their lives. See, at this moment, Jesus decides to go to his disciples who were panicking, who were, you know, going through a storm. But one thing I want you to notice what's really powerful about our God is that he decides, he looks around, he doesn't see a boat. And so how does Jesus go to his disciples if he doesn't have a boat? Well, what's so powerful about our God was that he decides to walk on water and he goes to them. Wait, what? Jesus can walk on water? See, that's how powerful our God is and that he's, he has control over everything, even the waves and even the storms of life. Amen. Can you guys say amen? One, two, three. Amen. Okay. So at this moment, Jesus goes to his disciples in the middle of the storm. Jesus walks calmly to them. So he's walking calmly on the water, even though the waves were so big and the winds were so fast and hard, Jesus was remaining calm because he knew that he was in control and that he knew that he was powerful, okay? At this time, the disciples were scared and they did not know what to do, right? They were panicking because the waves were just getting stronger and stronger and there was thunder all over. And then all of a sudden, one of the disciples, it said in the Bible that they saw something walking on water. And then all of a sudden, they got even more terrified because they said in the Bible that it was a ghost. Can you imagine it was a ghost? Because they couldn't really see who that person one person was. And then all of a sudden, Jesus, it was Jesus, right? It was Jesus, our God. And Jesus comes up to them. He says, take courage. Can you guys say that? Take courage. Don't be afraid. Jesus says, I am here. Okay, I am here. Take heart. It says in verse 27, if you want to look at it yourself, Jesus started to walk confidently to them. And 
he wanted to go to their messy situation and give them peace and tell them that everything is going to be okay because he was there. And then all of a sudden the story gets even more interesting, okay? The story gets more interesting because Peter, let's just say this is Peter. I know this is a remote control, okay? But Peter, all of a sudden he says, Jesus, if that's really you, command me to come to you on the water. And then Jesus was like, he replied, okay, Peter, come here. And so Peter decides to get out of the water and he starts walking and everything starts going well. He's actually doing, he's walking on water. And then all of a sudden, the Bible says that as he was going to, as he was looking at Jesus, and then he looked to the side and he saw how big the waves were and how loud the winds were, that he started to panic and he started to drown and he was falling, falling. But then all of a sudden, Jesus grabs him by the hand and pulls him out and he saves him. And Peter says, Lord, save me, help me, help me. And Jesus was so kind and so loving and so caring that he didn't let Peter fall. He actually grabbed him by the hand before he could fall and pulled him out and walked back to the boat. All of a sudden, Peter, it was when, when Jesus got back to the boat, the storms was the storm became calm. It was at peace. It was relaxing. The winds and the waves were gone completely because Jesus was with them on the boat. The disciples, how the story ends, Jesus says to his disciples, disciples, why do you have little faith? How can you guys are afraid? Why don't you trust me? I'm with you and I'm for you. And then the disciple says in verse 33, and I want to read it to you before I end. Everyone was astonished and amazed that Jesus did something miraculous. He walked on water, but not only that, he calmed the storm. And then it says in verse 33, if you open your Bibles, it says, Then the disciples worship him and said, You really are the Son of the living God. Right? And they were just amazed and they worshipped him. So I hope that you guys have learned something through this story. I'm going to be now teaching you guys some things that we can take away and apply in our daily lives. All right, so that's the story. All right, kids, so what can we learn from this passage? One of the things that we can learn is number one is trust in Jesus because he is always with you. It says in the Bible in verse 27, take heart, do not be afraid because God is always with us even in our storms or when we feel like he's not there. Always remember that God loves you and that he will not leave you nor forsake you and will not leave you in your mess, but will help you overcome so that you can do not have to be afraid and that you can trust in Jesus. Number two, the second thing I want you to remember is look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. You know, the reason why Peter fell into the water is because he took his attention off Jesus and started looking at his problems, looking at the waves, looking at the storms. So one thing I want to encourage you kids is that when you're going through a tough time or when you're going through some difficulties or problems, always remember to look at Jesus because he's the one who has the answers and he's the one that's going to give you the victory. Amen. Amen. And the last thing I want you to, to remember is that with the disciples, number three is give him thanks. Give Jesus thanks or be grateful to Jesus. The reason being is when Jesus, you know, when he calmed the storm, when he saved Peter, the disciples said to him, the disciples worship and praise God. So every time we overcome a battle or every time we overcome a problem in our lives, we should always give God thanks through prayer, through worship, through just even saying, God, you are good, you are great, you are loving, and I thank you for always giving me your presence and for always being with me. So let's always give him thanks for being with us. So I wanna remind you of the three points, is trust in him, number two, look to Jesus, and number three, let's give him thanks for all that he has done in our lives and the things to come. So I hope and pray that you guys have learned something today. Be reminded that God loves you and that he is for you. And tell your friends about Jesus because Jesus wants to know them too. All right, have a great day. I'm so glad that I got to teach you once again. And I pray that you guys have learned something. God bless and have a great day. Here's a short quiz to help everyone remember this passage. Number one, what did Jesus say to the disciples when he confronted them in the lake? A. Take courage, do not be afraid, I am here with you. B. Why do you have little faith? Or C. Hello, I am here to save you. It 
Tips A. Take courage. Do not be afraid. I am here with you. Number two. Which disciple tried to walk on the water? A. Andrew. B. John. Or C. Peter. That's right, C. Peter. Number three. Which two points did Pastor Joel share? A. Love Jesus more. B. Be grateful to Jesus. Or C. Look to Jesus. It's both B and C. Be grateful to Jesus and look to Jesus. Number four. What did the disciples think Jesus was when he was walking towards them? A. A monster. B. A spirit. C. A ghost. Or D. Pastor Joel. That's right, C, a ghost. Number five, what made Peter afraid when he walked out on the water? A, the wind and the waves, B, deep waters, or C, it was dark. It's A, the wind and the waves. And lastly, number six, what happened when Peter was sinking? A, God let him drown. B, God reached out his hand. Or C, God got upset. That's right, B, God reached out his hand. Matthew 14 verse 27 says, But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Jesus, praise God, thank you, Lord, for the words that we learned today. Please stop the COVID-19 so we can go to church. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>